So we are the Digital Overlay Group, and this week we once again conduct 10 interviews, and we got a new contact from the AWG, which is our sponsor. We've been in touch with him, and our how might we question is how might we remove the digital blind spots of an operational environment for battalion commands to make more informed decisions. So my name is Mark. I'm an engineering major. I'm Elizabeth. I'm an engineering major. I'm Teresa. I'm a writing major. I'm Nahum. I'm an engineering major. I'm Anthony, and I'm a CIS major. I'm Dalton, and I'm a biology major. Um, so this week we got a lot more information. Of course, we talked to a lot of different people, but there was a few common themes, like we identified our digital flying spot, which is exactly where we synthesize the information. Another contact kind of gave us uh, one of their practices that they're using now, which is organizing it into buckets, kind of like creating a grid for people, the user, to choose from. And then another contact gave us something to keep in mind when we're creating whatever we create, which is kind of like a mode of like offensive tab or a defensive tab or a grid to choose from. So uh, one of our hypotheses was like, is a battalion commander our end user? And after interviewing a few people, we decided that that was partially confirmed because we feel like a brigade command or a uh, battalion command is our end user, and that entails the commander as well as all the intel an analysts as uh, end users that are going to be using the product and gathering that information. Right. Another one of the hypotheses we attacked was how big of an impact can social media have on the battlefield. For interviews, we confirmed that there's actually quite a sizable amount of can. Social media can show the dynamics of the local area and potentially be used to prevent collateral damage for future operations. Another one of our hypotheses we touched on a little bit last week is the use of symbols and military symbols. And we refined it a little bit and changed the uh, handbook of that symbol to the ADRP 1-02 symbols. And one of the things that comes up is the color coordination of those symbols. And through one of our contacts, he mentioned that he was colorblind. So how does that impact him making a decision? And maybe the use of colors isn't our best solution in order to define enemy friendly, et cetera. Um, an hour in the life, so we were fortunate enough the other day to uh, have a lieutenant colonel come visit us here at X Labs and interview with him. And in the next week, I believe next Friday the 24th, we are going up to Fort Meade in order to really have a day in their shoes. Uh, um, so we, as we previously mentioned, our end user has kind of been narrowed down to um, the uh, battalion command. Um, but that entails the second lieutenant, first lieutenant, the captain's colonel. Um, but we've also narrowed it down to a G2 officer, which is kind of an intel from one of our contact members. Um, but then much of our uh, mission model canvas is built. Our value proposition canvas has not changed drastically. It's just refined as we've interviewed more and more potential um, end users. Um, Basically, lack of cohesive information sharing is a really big problem they have, as well as understanding local social structures. So our potential solution offers the opportunity to solve both of these their pains and add a fuller information picture as a potential gain. Um, our beneficiary archetype uh, got, uh, was updated. It's uh, now included to the battalion command. Um, we raise that age because battalion command, we found that they were uh, somewhat older, um, O3s usually, and, uh, or up. And then um, most of the other uh, characteristics have stayed the same. They're professional, motivated, and then the smart, fast decision. Uh, so with this, uh, we've changed our workflow to not necessarily include the process of the, the product, but more along the lines of how that information is gathered up and uh, submitted to be useful information. So it starts off with a company to uh, uh, squad level where they go out and do patrols and gather information as well as technological uh, searches for information. That then goes to a uh, intelligence uh, group that's in the battalion command that's like gathers and synthesizes that information. And then from that, it goes to the command uh, group which entails the commander and the command groups essentially prepares the presentation for the commander, that's like a snapshot of like all the basic main points of it, and then the commander then uses that to either 
like verify a decision or help make an, inter an informed decision, or he sometimes has to like go back and like verify that that information is correct if it's like debatable or not. So that's like the worst case. So moving forward to help the uh, battalion commander kind of uh, understand what the data is saying. Uh, currently, kind of two-dimensional data layers, uh, like you can imagine on a map, uh, kind of limit like how much you could put on a map. A lot of things that we noticed where it's kind of information overload. So one of the things I was researching was like kind of data visualization. Uh, and one thing that I embarked on and I hit on last week a little bit was a, uh, a technique or a form of visualization by Dr. Dave Warner, who's a neuroscientist and kind of specializes in how does your mind work in a way of kind of when you visually see something, kind of shortening that kind of travel time between uh, what you're presented with and knowledge and understanding. One technique is kind of uh, digital three-dimensional shapes that correlate between size, color, texture, uh, coordination of relative to other shapes that they're kind of connected to and what that means. So in the rings that you can see here, things such as uh, you're looking at, let's say, this one. On the graph key, I could say that at 6 o'clock, that's a, that's a kind of like a position for enemy populations. You can see here at 6 o'clock, I have a big red circle. And that could tell me that at 6 o'clock, by that representation of enemies, that I have a lot more enemies than the smaller circle. So kind of like that uh, object-related data, data visualization technique is uh, what we've been investigating to. And uh, for next week, I'm looking to uh, investigate other types of visualization techniques of data other than the two-dimensional, but on the three-dimensional level. <laughs> That's our wrap-up. <coughs> One, two, three. Questions? Um, can you go back to your the, the slide with the hypothesis? Is the hypotheses? Um, this might be a weird question, but when it says partially validated, like. Like for me, when Tom Brady won the Super Bowl, it was like, okay, you're the greatest quarterback of all time. I don't need to go look back at Dan Marino and Joe Montana's like tape. Like when I hear partially validated, does that mean you're not gonna like look at the alternative or like, you know what I'm trying to ask? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I think what we were trying to convey by partially validated is we originally were focused solely on the commander and how the commander is going to interpret this product or whatever it is. But realistically, we also got to include the battalion command, which includes all the analysts and all of the other people that are involved with making that decision, because the commander himself does not do any analyst uh, like analyzing. It doesn't. He doesn't do any work as far as that goes. He interprets snapshots of it and then gives us uh, a definition. So by partially validated means, like the battalion commander is still involved in the process and he still should be considered a end user because he has to interpret the data from uh, the snapshots. So the snapshots have to be perfect. Uh, like be able to be interpreted from that, but it, he is not our only user. So that's what I'm, we were trying to get at. You, you, we could maybe say unclear or like need more research, but that's essentially what we're trying to get at when we say that. But I saw your social media. I was really curious, you know, if there's instances where people are using social media to mislead our, um, you know, armed forces, and or if that's usually reliable because people aren't really knowing that we're using that. So I was curious about that. Well, one of our contacts talked about that. He was like, there's a tremendous amount of information that can actually be gathered through open channels, like social media or even news networks. He did also say, with a caveat, you do have to watch, because in certain countries, like, say, Russia or, or China, where they have their own equivalent to Facebook, but is more open to the government or whatnot, it's not necessarily as good of a snapshot. So social media is kind of a caveat, if you will. But it could still give you some insight into social dynamics. Definitely, you still need like the, the human aspect to it because there are a lot of like uh, crying wolf scenarios. So it, there's no way to eliminate the human aspect to it, no matter how good the filter. Is. And we also have to take into account like the vernacular of that particular <laughs> and the slang terms and stuff that might not be word for word. And uh, someone that the NRO had told us about um, uh, something that S3 is kind of uh, looking into to capitalize on is big data supply chain um, and kind of validating the, I guess, legitimacy of 
you know, where you're pulling your data from uh, was made aware to us from two weeks ago. So uh, and uh, someone considered. Sort of along those lines, in one of your gains, you, you said that uh, a gain would be having a complete set of information. I'm really curious what complete means. Uh, what would make it data or what would make all the information complete? Population versus sample size. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think for that one, we're kind of like looking into act like an aggregated source of information related to like what what's what's my what's my I guess operation if I'm um, moving uh, a unit through kind of like a zone and I'm more concerned about my route I would like to know the pertinent information kind of related relative to my route and dangers that I would right so maybe it's not necessarily a complete set of information but a a, um, a, a, a application so, right, I'm incomplete worried about the sufficient. incomplete but sufficient, right? I'm worried about the number of data layers or the number yeah. of the complexity. Of, right. right. So, so uh, I, I'm, I want to dig into a little bit about more about Battalion Commander because um, what you probably, there are 15 different branches of the Army and uh, a, a, a logistics Battalion Commander needs to know different information than an infantry Battalion Commander. And so, a generic battalion commander is not sufficient to solve the problem because you need to drill down and figure out which kind it is. I, I think infantry or, or tank cavalry kind of uh, battalion commander would be more in line with what I heard the problem being dis discussed. Um, and um, it, it, so, um, and, and they're like, they're like a, a seasoned professor that can look at a physics problem and can see that you made a mistake without actually doing the math, right? So that's the that so so they're doing 30 years of analysis like that because they've done 30 years of analysis. So you got to be careful. They're they're not they're not an analysts. They automatically analyze because of their experience. So, so careful. Um, the second the, or the next point is. You said it's the G2 that works? So be, be, be careful because the, the G means general staff. S is brigade staff and below. So an S2 is the equivalent of a G2, but a G means you've got a brigade or, or sorry, a division or higher staff. So you don't see those. So if you're talking about a battalion staff, they have S2s, not G2s. Okay. How's that for? So, but it's but it's important because you know, sound like a rookie yeah. talking about an Italian G2. You think think of G standing for general, so they're higher up. Because our problem is so general. Like, All right, good job, guys.